Hi, I'm Nick Morrow, the Director of Sales and Marketing for Cabot Guns and Alchemy Custom Weaponry. Don't worry, I didn't do anything with Eli. He'll be back very soon. I was recently down at our Fort Wayne facility where we make both Cabot Guns and Alchemy Custom Weaponry 1911s, and I followed our talented team of ACW gunsmiths around with the camera for a day to give you a glimpse of how they take oversized American-made 1911 parts and turn them into these beautiful hand fit and finish 1911s. Now before we get started I want to say we aren't going to be showing the entire process from start to finish for a couple of reasons. Number one, it takes about 20 hours to go from parts to a finished blued ACW 1911 and that's just a very very long time for a video. A lot of you would die of boredom. And the second is well we want to keep some of the magic for ourselves. However, this is going to be a very raw look at what it takes to, to have our gunsmiths hand fit an Alchemy 1911 pistol. No marketing gimmicks, no soft music, no uh, you know slow motion video, just pure unadulterated gunsmith magic. So we're calling this ACW Unplugged. For part one, we're gonna meet up with Kyle Alberta, the production manager for both Cabot Guns and Alchemy Custom Weaponry, and he's gonna take us over to Brant, and we're gonna look at the parts prep process and the basics of fitting a frame to slide and blending those together. Now, like I said, it's not going to cover all of the details, but you're going to get a pretty good look at the amount of time and effort it takes to start building an Alchemy 1911. Enjoy. I'm Kyle. I am the production manager for both Cabot and Alchemy Custom Weaponry. Um, we thought we'd show you around the shop a little bit today, show you a little bit of the process and some of the steps involved in hand fitting and hand finishing these Alchemy guns. Starts out with uh, raw frame and slide. This, this one is going to be a prime elite. So you can see these in the finished state all over the website. Um, you see how gorgeous they are. They start out just bare bones like this. So our traveler will tell us everything that we need to know. These are all specced uh, specifically for each build, um, all custom spec by the customer uh, or, or as dictated by the model. So we know everything that we need to do here and this is where it begins. So the first step we're gonna have to do is uh, deburr the frame and slide, and then these will be hand fit. Let's go over and uh, give this one to Brant. This is Brant. Brant is uh, going to start deburring this frame and slide. Um, that, that's the first step that we always take. So there'll be a little bit of burrs left from manufacturing we have to knock off, but there's also some areas need to be hand smoothed out. Um, just, just getting it all prepped to start fitting everything together. So on this frame, um, you'll probably spend, what would you say, Brent? 10 or 15 minutes on a deburr process yeah, between the frame and the slide. Yeah. Um, once it's to that point, we know that there's not, not gonna be anything interfering in the, in the frame to slide fit. We'll take a few measurements and then we can actually start hand fitting them. But you gotta make sure you have any of that stuff out of the way before you can start fitting the frame to the slide. So right now I'm working on the rear area of the frame here where your sear spring would come through. That way when we go back through and do a blast later in the blast cabinet, um, any of the remaining tool marks are gone and you can't really see that in that area. Um, we'll also get up here in the hammer cutout, both on the sides as well as the top side areas of the trigger guards. Remove any sharp surfaces from the front of the slide rails here. You'll typically see a small bevel, both top and bottom added in those locations. Um, basically anything that looks as though it was cut with a dull end mill is going to be removed and anything that is pointy or jabby is going to be kind of brought down to the point that it's not harmful to touch. Yeah, anything that's going to get in the way of the build process or is just a uh, unattractive artifact of machining. Yeah. Right, yeah, 100%. All right, so one feature that will have to be done individual to each gun is the HRT slide stop option. Um, optional on all of our pistols, but standard on the Quantico. So I have a Quantico frame here that will need to be ran. And we have a chamfer bit here set up and a fixture for these frames. It conveniently is relieved for the rail. So we will clamp that down. Now it's, it's on pins, so it can't move, but we'll throw a clamp on here just to make sure it doesn't jump around on us at all.
and that'll be the first step of the HRT process. Now we actually have to go fit the slide stop to, to the side of the frame. We'll have to flatten the end of it to the side of the frame and put another chamfer on there to break that edge so you can kind of depress your finger in there and still get it out even though it doesn't stand proud of the frame. All right, so now that we have chamfered the frame uh, to finish the HRT fitting, I'll first put the slide stop into the frame and you can see it stands a little bit proud of the side of the frame. So we'll have to measure how much we need to remove which is pretty standard. I always check just to be sure, but we end up running about 80 thousandths removal off of here. And that is right on the money. So now we have flattened it entirely and that should be completely flush with the side of the frame. Although I probably kicked up a big burr on the outside so we won't force it into the frame. Now I'll go ahead and establish a bevel all the way around the edge. Put a little bit of bevel all the way around the edge, nice and even. And now we will just sand off all those coarse abrasive marks and we'll have a nice flat HRT slide stop. All right, we'll check in with Brant, see how it's going. With the frame and slide fit here, you get that all deburred? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we're just gonna take some measurements to see where we're at in terms of the frame rails. Looks like we're at about seven, 54, 755, both. And now we'll check that against our slide, which is a little harder to measure, just based on how you kind of have to measure it. We're at about 755 here as well. So I might clearance the sides of this frame, just a skosh. Create a little more separation there so we don't get galling issues. Yeah, I've built a little clearance into where the frame rails, the exterior of the frame rails will contact the inside of the slide just to avoid in, any interference. Right now, if you tried to force that on there, even though they were pretty close in dimension, um, you would likely end up with some galling. So there's a couple surfaces that are held pretty tight and usually would be an interference fit. So those need to be filed down a little bit before we can proceed with the fitting and actually putting the slide on the frame. I'm not really trying to remove a lot, probably about what a half thousandths off each side. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of free up that slide movement, make it so it's not gonna friction weld in there essentially. All right, so now you've fit the frame to the slide. What's the next step you're gonna do? So the next step that I'm gonna do from here, um, generally I will start with the ejector because this is kind of the next sliding part. So we have to do quite a bit of modification to these uh, we have to clearance all of the flats so that it does not interfere with the movement of the slide. Basically every one of these angles needs to be tuned so that the slide can still move freely without contacting the ejector and slowing down or hanging up. We also have to shorten the nose to the correct length and clearance for the hammer slot at the rear. So a bunch of hand profiling to make sure bunch it of hand agrees profiling. with the frame, doesn't interfere with the slide without being gappy. Yep. Okay. And then we will also cut, let me see if I can get this apart here, a little notch in the front of the leg so that our pin can be put through to kind of hold that guy down through the frame as well. Yeah, and that's fit to each frame independently, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Once that's done, uh, I will generally start with a firing pin stop. This gun in particular has a Bomar rear sight. So we have to cut these down, profile the sides, make sure everything works so that this can actually slide in. We want it to be snug so it doesn't fall out, you know, kind of on its own accord and it how holds our extractor and firing pin and whatnot in place. Without so you any. first fit that right to the slide. Yeah. Cut 100%. the height so that it, it's clearance for the site and then fit the width to the to the back of the slot. Yep, and then I will also wanna make sure that there's not any undue wiggle here between the extractor and the firing pin stop. We really want that to be a tight interface so that you can't clock on your extractor yeah. while you're assembling or while it is assembled. So After the firing pin stop will be a little oversized for the extractor. Yep. You gotta yeah. cut that down have to, to that slot. Have to trim that down. You can see some file marks here on the front of the base 
want to make sure that that width is correct relative to this slot to make sure you've got a really nice interference fit there. Um, next up is tensioning the extractor itself, which we have to profile the nose of these a bit, typically add a little bit of relief just in case you do get a push feed or a little bit of a hang up going up the feed ramp, there's not any interference from the extractor itself. You wanna set these up so there's a little bit of tension going in, but you can get it in or out without you know, a major tool. Firing pin and whatnot can go in at this point. This is always tricky. I'm gonna to try to do this live without starting a space program. Once we kind of have the rear end of everything set up, we'll come back to the frame for a second and we will work on the slide stop. Um, we want to clearance all of this so that the slide can ride over it without getting hung up. We typically look for about four or five thousandths worth of play here. That way there's plenty of room. You don't have any hang ups there. Once we get that kind of taken care of, We'll go ahead and barrel. Um, this barrel is already done, but the hood length needs to be adjusted. The width of the hood needs to be trimmed to the breech face of the slide. That way we don't have any interference. Uh, we'll raise the upper lugs here until we can get a firing pinhole gauge to drop down through the bore and make sure we're lined up dead center on our firing pin. And then we'll go ahead and fit the lower lugs until we have good contact across the whole surface without any barrel bump or anything crazy like that going on. After we have that in place, we have our bushing fit. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and blend the rear of the slide. So I have just kind of a dummy recoil spring assembly that'll go in there, hold everything together while we're over at the abrasive. our little slide stop in there and we'll take a walk over to the wheel so obviously we have two really high points in the extractor and the ejector i like to use the belt sander to kind of knock those down first and foremost just kind of bring those parts down to the level of the slide Generally, I will come back to my desk and use my abrasives here to kind of complete blending the rest of those components. So we're going to try to maintain the profile that's already there and just bring all of these parts together so that they are on the same, I guess you could call it elevation as one another. So right now you can see we're still high. We're starting to get a little bit of contact down here but up here, especially where the ejector is, is still higher than the frame. So that's getting pretty close to a finished product there. You can see we've got all that stuff on one elevation for the most part. So we're gonna go ahead, flip that over and do the same thing on the other side. I really enjoy the barreling process, to be completely honest with you. There's a lot of different factors that go into that. Um, lots of little surfaces that need to be fit. A lot of intricacies. Um, constantly learning new ways to do things, really trying to get as much lower and upper lug contact as possible. Um, really make the gun something accurate that's gonna last a long time and also not beat itself to death. Although I will say I do enjoy blending the rear of the slide quite a bit as well, because there's just something magical about making all that stuff look like it's one piece representation of what your finished product is going to look like, at least for the, the rough sand.